In this video, I want to talk about the porphyrins and uh, specifically their structure and relevance to heme metabolism and to the porphyrias. Okay, and this this video is going to get a little detailed, um, more than what will matter as far as step one goes. But I think some of these details help uh, really solidify an understanding when it comes to heme, uh, its structure and its importance in metabolism as it relates to the porphyrias. So let's start with uh, just def defining porphyrins. Porphyrins are cyclic molecules made of four uh, parole rings. Parole rings, and parole is right over here. Okay, that is the structure of parole. Uh, four parole rings linked by methine bridges. Okay, methine bridges, and this is the methine bridge. And uh, that coordinate with metal ions, specifically as far as what we care about is iron ions, in particular iron 2+, plus, but there's also iron 3+, plus as we'll talk about at some point later in the series. Now another thing to recognize about porphyrins is that they contain a conjugated pi system that allows for the absorption of light in the visible spectrum, uh, the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, which means they can be colored. Okay, uh, just to kind of explain that, uh, that just briefly, that uh, relates to just organic chemistry if you want to take it back real quick. Uh, when you have um, double bonds, you have, they contain pi bonds, single bonds only have sigma bonds, but long story short, we got pi bond, sigma bond, pi bond, sigma bond, pi bond, sigma bond. And we have that to continue to alternate all the way throughout the molecule. When that happens, a molecule is said to be conjugated and conjugated pi systems can absorb light and give you all kinds of crazy colors. Uh, in the case of porphyrins, uh, the color that we care about is purple. Um, and the word porphyrin uh, or porphyria uh, comes from porphyra, uh, which is Greek meaning purple. Okay, and that's going to be important as it relates to the porphyrin, uh, the porphyrias, as we'll see later. Uh, another thing that, about porphyrins is that they, um, their names end with in or in, so like porphyrins, um, and we'll see more about that momentarily. Um, but anyway, we have this sort of uh, parent compound right here of porphyrins called porphine. Okay, and it's got this tetraparole nucleus, tetraparole meaning four paroles. Uh, nucleus sort of just referring to the idea that it's, it's the basic sort of structure, similar to that of the, the steroid nucleus when it came to steroid molecules, right? The three six-membered rings and the one five-membered ring. Here we have a tetraparole nucleus, right? So each portion here has a, so this is sort of the parole, and there's four of those parole rings, and they are specifically the A, B, C, and D rings. Uh, and they're all connected by these different methine bridges. Um, and each of those parole rings has um, a side chain or two side chains rather. So they have those side chains. Um, if we're going to start specifically by looking at uh, ring A and calling that. Um, so each each side chain is denoted with S and a number. So we're going to starting from S1 to S2 and the numbers will sort of continue around clockwise. Um, you know, S3, S4, S5, all the way to S8. Now, um, the side chains, there are, the key possible side chains are A, P, M, and V, referring, of course, to acetate, propionate, methyl, and vinyl groups. And I've got their structures shown there, in case you're not already familiar with them. Um, but long story short, though, the reason why I mentioned that is because different combinations or arrangements of the, of the side chains on um, the tetraparole nucleus will give you different porphyrin types. And there are four key types, one, two, three, and four. Uh, just to give you a kind of idea of what's going on with type one porphyrins, you've got um, an alternation, uh, sort of alternating A and P. Starting with S1, you go uh, A, P, A, P, A, P, A, P, A, P, all the way around. If that's the case, then you've got a type one porphyrin. Um, and type three is only different at what's going on on the D ring, right? You still have that A, P, A, P, A, P alteration. Um, or alternation, but uh, once you get to the D ring, this is where the A and the P are switched, right? So it goes A P A P A P P A, right? So here we've got that little switch uh, relative to to type one. And uh, something that's important to re realize what's going on is that uh, type three porphyrins basically give rise to um, the porphyrin that's in heme, protoporphyrin nine. So in um, in protoporphyrin 9, we specifically have MV, MV, M, P, P, M. And that came from a type 3 porphyrin, which had um, A, P, A, P, A, P, P. 
A, right? Uh, it's just that the the A's were modified to M's, right? In every single case here, the A was modified to an M. Um, and uh, these, the P's that were up here were modified to V's, right? But these P's stayed the same, they didn't change. Um, but anyway we'll, see, anyway, we'll see how that sort of happens in the actual pathway of heme biosynthesis. Cool, so that's basically what I want to talk about regarding porphyrins. Let's scroll down and talk about something that's related, and that is porphyrinogens. So.